Yes, hello, how is everybody today? This is uh, Dean Alley. I am a PhD candidate for um, Christian Leadership and Management. Uh, it's been a tremendous um, amount of, I've had a tremendous amount of study and uh, really enjoying the studies and um, learning a lot about um, many things you know, from a theology standpoint and from a leadership standpoint, this research is really making me uh, delve into some really, uh, really good stuff. And um, I find myself needing to cut, cut it off because I could continue to go on and on. But um, this is my second presentation. Um, this one will be on Christian leadership. Um, and it's, pretty much in support of uh, my uh, dissertation, Christian Leadership versus Secular Leadership, What's the Dichotomy Biblically? And um, I am uh, working through that as well. But uh, for this presentation, uh, I wanted to just uh, run it down with uh, Christian Leadership, as you can see on the, on the board here. And um, I would like to pray for us before we get going. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for the opportunity to be here today, Lord, and, and to discuss Christian leadership and, Lord, all the tenets that go behind it, Lord. And, Lord, uh, help me understand the things that you want me to understand, Lord. Allow me to communicate effectively to my classmates and, and others and uh, professors and other folks, Lord. Help me uh, be able to articulate uh, the things that I should communicate that you would have me uh, communicate. Lord, I ask you to uh, be with this school. I ask you to be with its leadership in this school. I ask you to be with every one of the students, Lord, that are going through these uh, uh, steps and challenges for their, their degree work, Lord. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right. So <clears throat> this is, uh, I put, it, it, I think it's seven 20 is what it is. My first one was 721. This one is 722 to indicate it is my um, my second um, presentation. As you can see, the opening thing, opening stage there, um, it's got a cup of coffee. This one, though, I think is tea. <clears throat> Anyways, let's get uh, let's get right into it. So. One of the underlining things um, I think is important um, is uh, the question, okay? Um, when we think of um, Christian leadership, let me, uh, let me demonstrate, for instance, a, a kind of a question. Um, when many Christian writers and uh, scholars or speakers um, are discussing leadership, <clears throat> The leadership topic. Uh, it's noted uh, often that uh, the subtle assumption of the hearer is that everybody is talking the same thing. Uh, but unfortunately, we know that's not the case. Many scholars and many of the research that I've done, uh, scholars are not convinced they are anyway. So it seems like we're all over the place with different uh, views on what Christian leadership is and any leadership topic. So, um, so that's the first thing I wanted to just state out there. We, we typically are not on the same page when it comes to Christian leadership or the hearer. Uh, and maybe you are. Maybe you are on board. But anyways, <clears throat> let me go to the next one here. Okay, so the purpose of the study uh, is to identify what Christian leadership is. Um, Christianity, which we know is an Abrahamic religion, um, based on Abraham's teachings, and um, go right in here. teachings is a man who lived four thousand years ago. Christianity, Islam, Judaism are, Judaism, uh, are the three major Abrahamic, Abrahamic, Hamic, Abrahamic. I'm sorry, religions based on Abraham and or Ibram. Um, I had a man I worked for, his first name was Ibram, last name Kakel. 
but um, it, it's either Abraham or Ibram. Uh, it, it's important uh, to all of them, really. Um, they're each of their religions. So the adherent, uh, they consider, um, they consider him, Abraham, uh, a vital prophet or father, father figure. Um, Abraham, he was directed, we know, as God, uh, God had him leave Mesopotamia and work his way. Uh, he was from Ur um, in that region. I've actually been in that region, the Mesopotamia, between the Euphrates and uh, that area. Um, and uh, we know he was a man of God. He was told to leave. Uh, he was supposed to be going to, um, I think it's called Tela Ella Maharakar, which is, a, is in Iraq. And uh, it's a significant ancient city. So not today, but it was an ancient southern Mesopotamia. Uh, Sumer, you probably heard, which is about 140 miles away um, uh, southwest. And uh, there's also Babylon, which is about 10 miles um, from the Euphrates River uh, to journey. Uh, and this is where God had him go. And moreover, after years of wandering, uh, he reached the land God promised, and as the custom, he built an altar, and he sacrificed to God. Uh, he was a very religious man. So our purpose here is to identify what Christianity is first, okay? So, all right, let me just start in here. So the common characteristics um, can also be that all faith is described as Abrahamic, shares uh, the various common um, characteristics of them. Uh, one element of these religions uh, is that they are all monotheistic, monotheistic, and monotheism is a tradition of worshiping only one deity, as we know. Uh, even though uh, all the faiths worship one deity, each religion refers to the deity using a different name. The, the, these religions uh, believe that God made the world and have, has supreme authority uh, over the world and humanity today. Uh, so that's a common characteristic. Another common one is the belief in prophets uh, that they're connected to God. That's another one, and God and humanity. Um, this is where um, God shows himself to a select few. Um, we know that... Uh, they offer, he basically uh, a select few, and he offers guidance and instructions um, for society. Um, the city of Jerusalem um, is also a factor among uh, Abrahamic uh, religions, with the city being a fundamental religious um, significance, if you will. I don't want to get that out of here. Just miss that. Sorry about that. Um, significance as far as all religions. So, um, uh, so this religion um, is, is, again, is tied to the Abrahamic uh, covenant uh, made with God, with Abraham's seed, um, which we know uh, contributes to the restoration of God's purpose for humanity uh, by singling him out um, and his seed to see how, or to, um, to show him how um, the redemption and blessings to be brought to the nation. So um, he is uh, he is the father, if you will, or the first person patriarch that God seeks out. Um, and uh, it should be noticed, noticed that these religions believe in an afterlife, all of them, um, where the dead are judged according to their actions. Uh, additionally, righteousness are rewarded uh, with entry to paradise. Um, and uh, while those uh, are who are evil are punished and cast into hell. We know, um, you know, that's basically, we obviously see it in a different light, <clears throat> but um, we'll, uh, we'll talk more about that. So uh, Christianity, I said, is, uh, is one of the major Abrahamic religions, the most popular religion globally. There's a little over 2.4 billion uh, followers, or 33% of the population, see themselves as Christians. Um, I have an appendix in my paper that breaks that out a little bit. I'm not going to bring it up here. I don't know if I brought it up now. So, um, so basically, Christians, 33%. Uh, Christian is predominantly based 
on the teachings of Nazareth, Nazar, uh, Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth, um, also known um, as Jesus Christ, the first century CE, a Jewish teacher, Christian and believed uh, to be the Son of God. Um, and the followers initially were believing Judaism, but they split from that religion, um, which Judaism, the Jews. So um, Christianity gets its name from Christ, uh, which translates Messiah. And uh, therefore, the terms a Christian applies followers of Christ. The divine Christian, um, I use the Oxford Dictionary here, um, basically relating to or professing Christianity or teaching. Remember what I just said? Uh, uh, which translates uh, from Christ, translates to Messiah, therefore Christians implies followers of Christ. So the Oxford Dictionary says that uh, relating or professing Christianity or its teachings. Um, also, there's an informal uh, having qualities associated with Christians. Example, kindness is uh, a person who has received Christian baptism is the believer in Christ, which is an outward um, decision or an inward decision for an outward uh, recognition. Um, so, yeah, so we're not going to go much there. So what does the scripture say? Um, John 1, uh, 1 John 3.14, and this is the A part, uh, we know that we have passed from life to death because we love the brethren. So this is the part of salvation, salvific, self, uh, this, no, salvific, no, salvation, basically, I'll say. Can't say the word. Um, essentially, uh, you, you become a believer, you believe on him, um, and you, you, you see yourself needing him. You, in, in terms of our, um, our um, doctrine or uh, denomination would be is uh, it would be the death, burial, and resurrection of uh, of Jesus. And once you um, you don't need to be baptized to be saved, but it's an outward uh, decision um, as far as uh, professing. But um, certainly don't need to be uh, baptized to be saved. That's what my point I'm making. And uh, uh, but. You are to, obviously, you're going to have to believe on him. You have to believe he was a real, he came down incarnate. He became, came, he was, he was God and, and man, and he lived a perfect life. Um, and he went to the cross and, and he took on or uh, all the sins or propitiation of the sins um, uh, that we deserve, both past, present, and for the future. Um, so, uh, John 1 3 14, again, uh, we're passed from death to life. That's when we believe on him. Acts eleven twenty six says, and when he had found him, he had brought him to Antioch, and he came. And it came to pass that the whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. So that says it right there in the Bible. Uh, Christians. Um, also in Acts twenty six uh, twenty eight, which we know once we get past the Gospels that Acts is establishing the church. First part of Acts is all about Peter. The last part's all about Paul. And many, many events in between. So Acts 26, 28 says it this way. Then Agrippa said to, unto Paul, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Again, we see the word Christian in Acts. Um, then, then we see it in 1 Peter 4, 16. If yet any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on his behalf. So we see the introduction of uh, a Christian in, in these few verses. So secondly, what do we need to do? We need to define um, leadership. What is it, right? And let's see. All right. So again, I go to Oxford. English dictionary. Um, these that's the Greek word. I, I can't even say that, but um, for leadership anyway. So this is where the document I, I was able to pull it from. Uh, the leader noun is a person who leads leads or commands a group, or organization, or country. Most people know that as what a leader is and and what is leadership. Also, a leader of the house, Britain. They give an example, obviously from the Oxford, from the uh, uh, for Britain. 
is a member of government officially responsible for initiating business in parliament, derivatives, leaderless, adjective, leadership, and noun. So um, that's kind of where, where that example. Um, obviously, this is this is basically called out, let's see here, Hebrew and Strong's um, from the same 650 magistrate leadership or chieftain or village. Um, and then uh, Strong 6546 uh, talks about, uh, in the sense of beginning leadership, uh, plural leaders, avenging or revenge is kind of how it's used in that context. But what's more? So we talked about leadership. We talked about, uh, we talked about Christian. What is a Christian? We're talking about what leadership is. Essentially, remember, um, a person who leads or commands a group, organization, or country. For us, in um, in a spiritual realm or from a um, Christian view, is um, you know we would think of like um, your pastor. Um, we would talk about the deacons. We would talk about official officers, and there's many, many more um, uh, positions. I know uh, uh, other uh, belief systems have. Uh, more of a deeper range of uh, leadership positions, but <clears throat> um, you know the over uh, the old, uh, old Testament talks about leadership in, in uh, within this uh, Israel society. As the prophets interact with the aspects of their society, is inevitable uh, engage with leaders. The prophet recognizes these leaders' authority. They are also known as holding the office, not necessarily indicating authentic. Leadership. I say that because just because you have a position doesn't mean that you are leading in a Christian, authentic viewpoint. So uh, the prophets, they expected leadership to lead the nation and um, to be more faithful walk with Yahweh in the Old Testament. Um, the prophets rebuked leaders who failed them. And uh, that, that can be seen in um, first book in Under Leadership. He talks about it. It's page uh, 501. But nearly every di discipline or nearly every definition, leadership is one way or another equated to influence, right? Um, it's, subject, uh, it's subject to great debate concerns throughout the secular world um, and the goal, uh, global church today. God's example of leadership is important for his people well-being throughout the Bible. He calls, for the, calls forth leaders to bless the nations. First, it's Abraham. We see Moses next, obviously Joshua, we saw David, and then Paul. So if we understand leadership, we need to first understand Christianity and religion in itself. For example, Christianity is one of, remember I said it was three, one of the Abrahamic religions. So what is the Abrahamic religion, this technical term here? Uh, Christianity is one of the major Abrahamic religions uh, and the most region, uh, regionally religion globally, uh, receiving more than 2.4 billion globally. I think I brought that up, but 33% identify themselves as a Christian. Uh, you know, obviously following Christ, um, as you can see, Jesus of Nazareth had followers, um, which again we said that they were following Judaism um, in their in their regions there, and then uh, converted to. Christianity or following of Christ. Um, so I broke out a little map here. So you can see the world world religions. Um, I apologize, it's real <clears throat> kind of funky here, but uh, Buddhist, 5.84%. Uh, other religions, just other stuff, 12.48. Non-religious, 14.09. Christians at 33.32. Muslims and climbing. 2101, or over 21%, and Hindu is over 13%. So um, you can see where we're at, or if that's where you believe, um, this is where the Christians are. Um, so when we start looking at Muslims, and we talk about the growth piece, I pulled some information off of uh, a website um, in, in, in Washington, D.C., it's called the Pew Research. I'm, I'm more than confident you guys know about it. Pew Center and Free Research Center and stuff. So anyways, 
I just I bring it. I don't have anything updated from here, but just to give you a sense of what that looks like in, in growth uh, of all ages, um, you can see just the Muslims in the United States alone. This is just the United States. It's not worldwide. Um, and it continues to grow. Almost three and a half million and, and projected to do a lot more. Also, I wanted to key in on some uh, Abrahamic religions, Abrahamic religions. Uh, I can't pronounce my Yazidi uh, is a religion. Samaritism is a, is a religion. Maidians, remember this was the other religions here. So you have the Maidians, the Druze, Baptism, uh, Baha'i Faith, and Rasta, uh, uh, Rasta Aferi. So um, here's the leaders that found them. Um, they're saying John the Baptist may be here, um, and then talks about the population of those. So uh, this faith has 8 million. Um, this one has 2 million. Um, this guy right here, he doesn't have a whole lot. He's only got 4,000. But, and then uh, you can see the chart yourself. Um, so Jewish population, it was important from uh, Judaism, Jew, Judaism, Judaism. Judaism. Uh, the population, uh, they make up 2.4% of the U.S. population. So let's go back here and um, other. So they're in the, they're in the other part here. So uh, let's see. Again, I apologize the scrunching here. Um, trying to pull some of this information is difficult. So um, so shares of the United States, 2.4, estimate million, 5.8 in Jews. Um, talks about the religion, uh, 1.7 and 4.2. So anyways, you can see the a little bit of chart here in history. Um, but the point here is Jews make up 2.4% of all U.S. adult population. All right. So what is management? Because you hear leadership and management. And for me... Um, I've been in leadership, gosh, forever, it seems like, but it's always something to learn. So a leader, just in a real short narrative, a leader um, essentially is inspiring others to get the results they're looking for uh, to achieve and, and grow the operation. A manager is going to manage the tasks and manage the people and manage it. So there's two different pieces here, a leader and a manager. So I just want to call out the distinctive here. What is management? So the concept of management is defined in many ways. Over the years, uh, has been defined over the years. Today, however, the term ordinary meaning is used usually associated with the practice of managing people in organizations. This management style is often referred to what we call corporate, corporate, if you give me a few here, corporate, I'm sorry. Uh, leadership, meaning that the company's corporate leadership is comprised or composed of managers who oversee, uh, is an oversee its operation. The management style is centered on the day-to-day -day operation. So, um, so when we think about management, corporate leadership, corporate leadership is composed of managers. Now, of course, you have the executive level, you have corporate, executive, senior, you know, and then the office is there. But that kind of gives you an outline of what a manager or management, it's the day-to-day -day operations, which they focus on. Bible calls the management uh, overseers, overseer. The word appears 12 times in the Old Testament and once in the New Testament. The NIV uses at least six times in the New Testament to translate the word epa, uh, episcopus, which is derived from peer or watch over. The Old Testament overseer is used to translate uh, three words, which literally mean Number one, to visit with authority. Number two, uh, to uh, be preeminent, one. And number three, to be the head writer. Uh, the word overseer speaks to many, uh, speaks to one of them or many representatives, uh, represent a high purpose of authority and to exercise authority over whatever was designed. Including its authoritative oversight was an idea of watching, directing, and protecting the master's interest. New, New Testament carries on 
uh, this uh, also regarding a man appointed to serve in the church, you know, and I, I put in Acts 20, I put Phil, uh, Philippians 1, uh, 1 Timothy 3, um, uh, Titus 1, 7, Peter 2, 7, uh, just to, in, to, to, to give you a sense of, uh, uh, you know, what does the Bible say from overseers? Okay, all right, what is, Christ, and what is Christianity? Christianity is the best described as a capability to enthuse or pursue so we talked about management and leadership, um, and now we add the, the Christian uh, theme here. But it's best described as, as the capability to, to enthuse, persuade, and encourage people to move beyond their current station in life to reach their full potential. Uh, it's kind of like if you're a parent, right? You're a parent, and you're uh, trying to get your kids to do well in school. Um, you're trying to get them whatever they do. They do it to the best of their ability. Um, and they continue to uh, learn and become better, um, you know. So you're going to encourage your, your 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 daughter or son and your children uh, from where they are to where you, you where they are going to be as they mature. So it's ability to deal with the big and small that things or life gets thrown at us, make the uh, makes uh, at us or make the right decisions at the right time. And always put the needs of others before yourself. If uh, it is the ability to inspire others to achieve their goals and dreams and do so in a spiritually fulfilling way. So ultimately, uh, it is the ability to lead people in a way that is consistent with teachings of Christ. Lastly, uh, Christian leaders should have a good testimony to emulate Jesus uh, Christ as a servant. And uh, I put in First Timothy here. Moreover, he must have a good rapport uh, of them without, without lest he fall into reproach of the devil's snare. Um, I'll just kind of paraphrase a little bit here. So Christian leadership. Um, so let me just put a little blurb in here. Uh, leader guiding strength, knowing uh, God to be more like Jesus is a goal. Um, uh, the, one of the best gifts that we have. Uh, God gave us as Christians is the, is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit indwells um, and uh, certainly um, helps us when we get into situations. So it guides and helps um, in any discernment and alters our hearts. Or basically, you sometimes have a conscience, right? And um, you know that 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 more than likely is probably the Holy Spirit with the moral <clears throat> with the moral argument, if you will. The so Sermon on the Mount underlines the humidity, uh, humility, uh, integrity, kindness, forgiveness, peace, and love as the core group of Christian living. We can see this in Matthew 5, 6. Therefore, this directly opposes living for self in decision-making and materialism. In addition, they possess distinctive, distinctives unique to Christian leaders. They are biblically orientated and follow God's word as um, the only authority which means that the secular leader is not necessarily an immoral person, but a person that does not possess the two characteristics. So <clears throat> um, the, the first leader in America, uh, first leaders in America were overwhelmingly Christian. We know that. We had uh, Puritans and Pilgrims. Um, you know, you had uh, Roger Williams. You had you know, I think of uh, Whitfield. It's just a tremendous amount of first. They all came over with a religious zealous, a lot of it for church and state um, separation. So, um, but they had clear views of what they wanted uh, in the new country and they wanted it to be. So they envisioned a reward hard work, an economy that rewarded hard work, an education system allowed anyone to rise. Education uh, essentially opens more doors for you, gives you more opportunity. To understand that outstanding leadership often is defined by taking the right path, even when it's it's not the easiest or the most popular. Um, this leadership style is centered on firm, charismatic leader who is who can be motivated and inspired, uh, inspire people to achieve great things. Um, Christian leadership, according to uh, authors uh, Anthony Step, uh, the emphasis on how one leads. He gives five answers. According to uh, his five venues is identifying the principle of Christian. Number two, highlighting the difference between leadership and management. 
Uh, number three, a brief look at leadership and management styles and institutional context, uh, describing six strategies to impl implementing, maintaining leadership, and presenting number five, a model for leadership in a formation in a, in a congregation and in the church. So let's recap. We discussed the purpose of the study. We discussed uh, the dictionary word defined Christian. We defined uh, leadership. Uh, we introduced the Abrahamic religion, talked about the different uh, major three. Uh, we, we asked what was management, we described what management, and uh, we asked what leadership is. So conclusion, let me give you this. Bob Jones once said, for a Christian leader, it is not divided into secular or sacred. To him, all ground is holy ground. Every bush is, burn, is a burning bush. Every place a temple of worship. Therefore, if we work towards God, a godly purpose with diligence, a person will have will not have to worry about their leadership because our mindset is to be working suitably for the inspection by God Himself and will always pass the human test. Now I emphasize that at the end, um, so I took bits of that, but um, you know, so that was uh, that that was Bob Jones. Everybody knows. Well, lastly, I'm going to say this. So the question is: So what is what is Christian leadership? Uh, so what? So is Christian leader a leader only in the Christian context, or is he a leader in any context? So during my research, I can tell you the conclusion here for Christian leadership or leaders is lead in any context. Number one, you lead in any context, whether it is uh, whether or not uh, it is a professed Christian organization. How you work somewhere else, you still lead in that context. Uh, Christian leaders are Christian leaders outside as well as inside the Christian community. Uh, we are mandated to lead uh, a, uh, Christianity regardless of the context. And that's kind of what I had. I appreciate this little, uh, little presentation here um, on my paper. Uh, I wish everybody the best and good luck. Thank you.